Today we're looking at a pair of hybrid SUVs that are aimed to meet the needs of family buyers but also do their bit for the environment. Both of these models are petrol electric hybrids and they both offer the opportunity to lessen your carbon impact while also lessening the impact on your wallet as well. First up is the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid, which has been selling up a storm since its arrival in 2019, and understandably so. The RAV4 won Cars Guide's Car of the Year in 2019, and the hybrid model also won our mid-sized SUV comparison against a couple of likely competitors. In this test, the RAV4 Hybrid is up against the all-new Subaru Forester Hybrid, which might well offer an unexpected alternative for buyers after this sort of family-friendly fuel-sipping motoring. In this video, we'll go through all the important stuff that you wanna know, like practicality, value for money, safety features, and of course, how they drive, but maybe more importantly, how good they are when it comes to fuel use. They're hybrids after all. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget, hit subscribe, hit like, share this with your friends, and also hit that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date with all our latest videos. Oh, and if you wanna read the full detailed comparison review, the link's in the description. First up, we'll consider what each of these particular SUVs costs. The RAV4 hybrid model we have here is the GXL all-wheel drive, which lists at $41,490 plus on-road costs. If that's too high a price for you, the hybrid RAV4 range starts from just $35,490. We just got this spec because it was the closest available against the Forester Hybrid L model, which we have here, which has a list price of just under 40 grand. It's the most affordable hybrid Forester available, but there's a higher spec model with more equipment if that floats your boat. Check out the Cars Guide site for a comprehensive equipment breakdown across both of these models. Next up, let's take a look at the practicality on offer in each of these models. They are among the most thoughtful in their class when it comes to fitting stuff in. We attempted to fit the same stuff in each of these SUVs. First up, you can get a look at the boot when it's completely empty. Now, here's how much space the Cars Guide luggage takes up in the boot. There's still space in both of these models. And here's how they both go with the Cars Guide pram in there. Now. Can they fit all of it in? And what about the spare wheel? Well, the Subaru doesn't actually have one. Instead, there's a battery pack where it would be, which is disappointing for an adventure-focused brand like this. But the RAV4 has a space saver spare wheel, which is definitely a plus for the Toyota. Next up, backseat space. We'll start in the Forester. Rear seat room in the Subaru Forester is very good. I've got the driver's seat set for me. I'm 182 centimeters tall and there's plenty of room here. I've got heaps of knee room, heaps of toe room, lots of headroom, and there's lots of glass, which will be great for kids on road trips as well as adults too. The seat is a little bit flat and a little bit upright, so it can be maybe a touch uncomfortable on longer trips, but for child seats, it'll be perfect. There are dual isofix and three top tether points as well. The seat has a flip down armrest if you're not using the middle seat. And there's also a pair of USB ports down here, which is very handy for keeping things charged. You've got directional air vents and dual map pockets on both seats. It's all very smart back here. Up front in the Subaru Forester, things are pretty good. It is a very busy cabin. You've got a lot of buttons on the steering wheel and you've got a fairly busy center stack as well. Plus, you've got three screens in front of you, one for the driver, one for the driver and another. Well, that's also for the driver and passenger. The one up the top shows you what's happening with the engine and the powertrain and everything else. And it also works for the front and side view cameras, which there's buttons down here for. And the middle one, well, the center screen, I guess it's the, the most important one because it controls all your media and stuff. It's actually really small in this spec. It's six and a half inches, which by class standards is tiny. And it doesn't have sat nav, does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is good, but it's very small for the class. 
The materials are all nice. There's a good mix of different elements inside the cabin, which keeps things interesting. And the seats are fairly comfortable. They could be maybe a little bit more comfortable. The RAVs are more comfortable, but these ones are heated, which you don't get in the RAV4 in the GXL spec. So it's got that going for it. The rear seat experience in the RAV4 is a bit different to the Forester. You sit a bit further down in your seat and it's a bit more of a lounge chair experience because the seat is more comfortable by quite a margin. I've still got plenty of room, uh, lots of knee room, lots of foot room and lots of head room as well. But because you're sitting a little lower, you don't get quite as good a view out the window. That might matter to you or not, there's a pair of rear seat vents down here, directional air vents, plus like the Subaru, you've got two USB ports in there, which is handy for keeping kids things charged while you're driving. Yep, there's also a flip down armrest with a bit more padding than in the Forester as well. And generally it's pretty good, apart from the fact that you don't get a map pocket on this side, you get one on the passenger side. But other than that, it's pretty good back here. Up front in the RAV4, things are very well sorted for you. And the design of the cabin is just a little bit smarter and it's simpler, which is good. There's a nice storage section in front of the passenger. You've got good sized cup holders. You've got a section in front of the shifter, which has a wireless charger in the GXL spec, which is very handy. Plus there's a USB port there, plus two more USB ports here. So you've got five USBs as opposed to three in the Forester, and it doesn't have a wireless charger either. And it's also got a bigger screen in here, an eight inch media screen with sat nav built in, which is handy, plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And there's some other nice elements to the cabin, including the materials that have been used. I really like the feel of the steering wheel in this car. I also really like the rubberized knobs on the dashboard here. They just add something a little bit more rugged and interesting to the cabin. These are family SUVs and safety, as always, is a vital consideration. Now, let's take a look at a breakdown of what each of these models has when it comes to safety equipment. Both of these models have a reversing camera and rear parking sensors, but the Subaru has a curb camera and a front camera, while the Toyota opts for front parking sensors. Both have seven airbags, including driver's knee coverage. Plus, both models have auto emergency braking with pedestrian detection and cyclist detection. The Subaru betters the Toyota with rear AEB as well, while the RAV4 gets auto high beam lights, which the Forester doesn't. You can't split them from there. They both come with lane departure warning, lane keeping assistance, and both have blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert as well. The ANCAP ratings are the same too, and they were both tested against the 2019 criteria. Both of these models are hybrids, but not all hybrids are created equal, especially not these two models. The Toyota has a bigger, much more powerful petrol engine, plus a couple of electric motors as well, and one at the rear axle. The Subaru's engine is smaller and has lower outputs, and rather than having electric motors at the axles, it integrates its motor into the CVT automatic transmission. But it still has its conventional symmetrical all-wheel drive setup. We get that it's complicated. Make sure you read the full review for all the detailed specs. The link's in the description. For this test, we put both of these models through their paces across a mix of different driving situations. We're talking urban driving with roundabouts and traffic lights, but also some twisty roads and a bit of highway driving thrown in as well. And here's what we found. The drive experience in the Forester Hybrid is not all that different to a regular Forester. The steering can be very light at lower speeds and at higher speeds it can actually be a little bit twitchy on centre because you've also got the lane keeping assist system intervening a little bit at times and it can mean that it's a little bit hard to judge in that sort of situation. 
At higher speeds, it can get noisy too. Above 80 k's an hour, there's lots of wind noise and mirror noise to contend with. But otherwise, it's really quiet. And in particular, the engine is super quiet. That's one of the advantages of the boxer engine that Subaru has persisted with for so long, is that it is a very quiet and refined engine. The CVT automatic, which has stepped ratios to make it feel more like you're driving a conventional auto, is also mostly very agreeable. It's just that the hybridness of this car isn't maybe as overt as in the RAV4. It does jump between the battery power and using the electric motor or the petrol engine or using a combination of both depending on the situation. So, for example, if you're coasting down a hill, you'll notice that it'll kick over to EV mode. Or if you're taking away from a standstill, you'll notice that the battery will probably end up assisting the engine. While the whole powertrain works well in terms of engine transmission and electric motor and everything that comes in between, it does leave you feeling a little bit let down because it doesn't rely on its electric modes as much as the RAV4 does. So, you will notice that maybe your fuel use could be better. You'll see that in a sec. But also that it just doesn't rely on that EV mode like you might expect a hybrid too. And if you're buying a hybrid, if you're spending extra, like you will be if you choose the Forester Hybrid L, then that could be a little bit disappointing because it just isn't as hybrid as it could be. But on the flip side, if you're just thinking about dipping your toe in the water when it comes to hybrid life, this could be perfectly fine for you. And it's still a very impressive car to drive. The drive experience in the RAV4 Hybrid GXL is probably going to be more what people expect when they're buying a hybrid SUV because it relies more readily on its electric motor and battery pack to propel you forward. And to me, that's the reason you're buying a hybrid SUV. It's gonna use its battery pack more often. It's gonna run in EV mode more often. And it's gonna reduce your fuel consumption as a result. We'll get to that in a sec. One thing you might notice if it's your first time driving a hybrid car is that the brake pedal feel isn't quite the same as what it is in a conventional vehicle. And in the RAV4, it does have a little bit of a weird sort of clicky, squidgy feel to the top of the pedal, but the progressive nature of the brakes means that it does pull up pretty strongly. In the Forester, I didn't really address it in that car, but the brake in it was a bit touchier than this car. So if you do a lot of stop-start driving, you might notice that. And you might have noticed that there was a bit of coarse chip road noise intrusion in the RAV4. It doesn't quite have the same level of sound insulation that the Forester does. It can be a little bit noisier in most situations, but it's never too noisy. The ride comfort is maybe a little bit firmer than the Forester. Around town especially, you will notice that it picks up the little lumps and bumps a touch more, but it's never uncomfortable and never feels like things are out of control either. It's a comfortable and enjoyable car for the driver and the passengers. It's so impressive, this car. I'm really taken by it. Over our testing, we kept a tally of the fuel consumption for each of these models, and they are hybrids, and so it's pretty important. Now, here's the claimed fuel consumption that each of the manufacturers says these models should be able to achieve. But in the real world, things were a little bit different. Here, you'll see our actual fuel consumption on test across a mix of different driving, and it's pretty clear which one was better when it came to using its hybrid tech. Both of these family-focused hybrid SUVs offers a lot to like. And in this test, it was pretty close, but the Subaru Forester Hybrid L came second because it doesn't quite live up to the hybrid lifestyle that we would expect for an SUV with that sort of badge on it. It's still very practical, still decent to drive, and still pretty good value as well, but it wasn't 
good enough to match up to the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid GXL, which we think is just the better execution of hybrid technology and an even more practical offering for family buyers. Tell us what you think in the comments section below. If you'd agree or disagree with what I've said, that's fine. Let us know in the comments section, but also if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget, hit like, hit subscribe, share it with your friends, and also hit that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date with all our latest comparisons.